My friends, I spent most of the afternoon yesterday making deer antler saddles. I'll show you the status of that. I will show you our next project in line, which I think you'll find very interesting. And I received a mystery Santa gift that I have to ask about. <laughs> and we'll do all that right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It is Tuesday, January 10th, and that means we'll be playing this evening at Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rolla, Missouri. I have to admit that about since December, it hasn't been very well attended. We'll have four or five people show through there, and that's about it, really, that actually stay and listen to the music, let's say it that way. They're, they're, they have their customers that roll through and just go on out, you know. Anyway, we would enjoy it if you could make it down this evening. If you're in the area, that'd be great. I mentioned I have a mystery Santa gift. It came from Springfield, Missouri. You can see that it has my return address on it. <laughs> the card that was in there, you know, and then it just says Secret Santa. <laughs> it came from Springfield, Missouri, which makes you think automatically it's got to be the boys down there at the acoustic shop. But they gave me such appropriate gifts that unless they talked to Emory or someone like that, I don't know how they would know that I'm a fan of both Freddy's and uh, Menards. You know, I go to Menards and Freddy's all the time. If, if it is the boys down there in Springfield, they would have had to talk to Emery or my wife or someone, but more than likely Emery. If it's not the boys down there, then I would say it has to be the deer hunter that was here, and that would be Ron's brother. I mean, he knows I like Freddy's, and he knows I go to Menards all the time. So it's got to be one of those two guys, I think. Though it could just be somebody totally different that just throws me off, too. The deer hunter guy doesn't make a lot of sense, except that I think I've heard him say before he goes to Springfield, because he's up in St. Louis. He's not in Springfield. Anyway, it's got me puzzled. I'm really, I would love to know who sent it, because I'd like to say thank you, but uh, maybe you'll see it on this video and hear the thank you. I made uh, a bunch of deer antler saddles that are in this bucket here. You can see that I got them this far. It took me about two and a half hours to get them that far. That's the hardest part, the most time consuming for me. You know, you've got it. And, and actually, they're still not to the final, final spec. This is just roughed out. I have to now run them through my thickness sander and get them precise so that they're exactly the same size as the normal ones. Just so you know, I have to round off the ends, drill the holes in them, and then I have to cut out that little notch that sits on the uh, adjusters. So I do all that, then I can put them on my duplicator and duplicate them. And that's why I can't make them unique. People are always saying, can you make them with different hole spacing or this or that? And I can't do it because I put them on my duplicator and make them. And I mean, I could do it, don't get me wrong. I can make a one-off. But gee whiz, it's just not worth my time and effort unless I charge you a couple hundred bucks because it takes a long time to make these things. Then I thought on the other side of the coin, I'd show you this, a couple things. Like here's a piece of deer antler and on the outside you think, well, that would make a nice deer antler saddle. And then when you saw it on the inside, look at that, every bit of it's porous. And it's really porous, especially when you look at the end, the tree ring end of it there. Hopefully it'll focus. It's very, very porous. It's very thin wall. And you don't know till you cut them open which ones you're going to get. Because, I mean, most of them show porous on the end. But when you cut them open, the, the porosity runs out fairly quick. Not on this one. It ran all the way to the base, you know. And that's unusual. But that's just the way it is. Such is the problems that you have when you're trying to make this. Then the other issue you have is some of them start curling at the base instantly. I mean, just start curling. Well, then that base is kind of not going to be usable for a, for a piece this long. It's hard to get something like square like that out of something that curls really fast. So there's a bunch of issues to making these things. They're not simple at all. And that's why this part actually takes the longest. Once you get them square, then the rest of it is fairly routine. But if you do have deer antler and you don't have a real absolute use for it, and you can send them to me, that'd be great. 
Uh, if you want to only send the bases, I'm okay with that, but make sure you send me at least, uh, you know, on the, like the base is always tilted and on the short end of the base, make sure it's at least, oh, say three inches minimum and three and a half inches would be better. So if you could send me about a three and a half inch piece and box those up and send them to me, I'd be happy with that. If you can leave the skull cap attached, that's even better. Or, and you can saw between the antlers. For instance, if, if these are two separate antlers on the top of the skull, you can saw right down through the skull like that and then cut off this piece, send it to me, cut off this piece, send it to me, and then that way you're sending a very small package. Hopefully that's just some helpful information there to keep your costs down low because I know people are donating this stuff to me and I really appreciate it. Some of you are probably saying, why don't you just buy it and get it over with? Well, you could, uh, but I'd pay more to buy it than I'm selling these things for you know what I'm saying I'd have to like triple my prices that wouldn't help anybody you know if you can send it to me great and I'm always in need like I can never have too much never I want to interrupt the video to tell you that Scott has a video out there on his uh, Facebook page of him playing his new guitar he built in the shop and I think you'll find it awesome it's really good uh, the guitar sounds great and he sings a really nice song that I think you'll truly enjoy so uh, be sure to check out the link in the description of this video to Scott's performance well I told you I'd show you the next project in line and here it is whenever you see an old coffin wooden case like this yes this is an old wooden case Whenever you see that, you know you got something pretty old. There's the front side there. The case is kind of busted a little bit right in there. It's got the little wire handle. That's what they used back in the 1800s. <laughs> that ought to give you your first clue. And let me see if I can get it out of the case here without destroying anything. It looks like it's falling apart. That ought to be your second clue, it's falling apart. And there it is. And I haven't looked at this in a couple of months because it's been on the shelf, but I think it's a Washburn. Yep, yep, it is a Washburn. It says George Washburn on the little tag in there. I think you can, I'll see if I can get the light right where you can see inside there. Maybe you can hold it still, turn it a little bit in case the light changes. But it says George Washburn in there. And it's cracked along the back here. I can feel that. It's, uh, you know, it just uh, needs some TLC. There's no binding on this, you can see. It's just the edges are rounded over to match. The, the back is uh, not rounded over, but it's just no binding either. It looks like it's made out of rosewood. It's, you know, it's got friction peg tuners. That'll tell you it's old right there. I forget the age of this. Let me see if I wrote it down. No, I didn't. I did not write it down. I don't see a, a date on this, but I'm thinking it was in the 1880s, 1890s, somewhere in there. I, I don't know that for sure. It might even be older than that. This is a pretty old guitar. You know, it's a candidate for being the oldest guitar I've ever worked on. It, it's definitely very old. I think the friction peg tuning keys is what really tells me it's really old. And it all appears to be original. Some of the unique features are this metal bridge. And this is an adjustable bridge that was for sliding around. And I guess that metal well, truthfully, I don't know, was that added later maybe by somebody to let this slide around? Because I don't know if that would have been original or not. But uh, whoever did it put some screws in the top here and the screws aren't flush or anything so that's kind of bad. I really don't know. I'm going to try to look this up and see, you know, what, how it probably looked when it was new. I would say this goes this way because there's a little metal saddle on the front of it and so the strings tied to a tailpiece and here is the tailpiece and you can see that the tailpiece has pulled in and wore this out here mostly because the sides have sunk in and so it's really made a mess on the end there and it's cracked it here. 
there's a washer on there, but that's, a, that's actually a pulley. And that pulley was what laid inside the, t the uh, tailpiece here. So the tailpiece went like that. So that, that actually fits the tailpiece. Wow, it's pretty cool guitar. Everything is original except maybe this, and even this could be original. The only reason I don't think this is original is I see marks around this, and uh, maybe even the tail pin and all that's not original, maybe, because I haven't looked this up yet. But I will look it up and we'll see what's original and what's not. It's, it's definitely a unique guitar and I'm looking forward to getting it restored. And of course I'll show you some daily progress on it in my vlogs. I uh, don't really show you any techniques or how I actually did it at, in the vlogs, but then there will be a full video coming out later that'll show all the detail. And then just a little bit more to add on to this. You can see there's some a monogram on the top there. It says, I think it says J-E-R, which that means it's my guitar, right, Jerry? <laughs> Short for Jerry. And then what's really cool, I mean, this is really cool, is the inside here. It's great and it's sad at the same time, and you'll see what I mean. This is just literally falling apart, but there's all kinds of pictures inside there. Look at that, isn't that the coolest thing? Some of those pictures are laying down on the floor of the case. I'm gonna do my best to try to glue all that stuff back in place and try to, try to conserve it as much as we can, but you know, you can only do so much on something like this. So we're going to try to restore the case and the guitar and make everything really cool on this. So I'm looking forward to that one. I know you guys are too. Well, my friends, I've got a busy day ahead of me finishing up those saddles. That's going to take a good part of the day, maybe all day. Hopefully I can also finish up that electric guitar that's up there and get the strings on that yet today. And before we go to Dickie's Barbecue and play this evening. So come out to Dickie's if you can. Uh, we would love to have you. Don't forget to check out Scott's video on uh, playing his new guitar he built in the shop last week. I think you'll really enjoy it. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.